Welcome to Triumph IAS. It's a daily mains practice question and answer series. This program is exclusively designed for UPSC CSE aspirants. In this video discussion, we will discuss UPSC CSE mains previous 25 year questions. Question number 1. Tropical cyclones are largely confined to South China Sea, Bay of Bengal and Gulf of Mexico. Why? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The South China Sea, Bay of Bengal and Gulf of Mexico are tropical cyclone-prone areas doing factors. The main body of the answer should be Number 1. Proximity to equator keeps the water in the region warm throughout the year which is ideal for the formation of cyclone. Number 2. All these regions are close to ITCZ and receive sufficient heat creating a low-pressure area due to thermal heating. Number 3. These areas are surrounded by large land masses. Differential heating of land and sea creates pressure difference which gives rise to tropical cyclones. Number 4. Coriolis force plays important role in generation of tropical cyclone, which is normally high near the South China Sea, Bay of Bengal and Gulf of Mexico. Number 5. Upper winds like jet streams are remarkably absent during the monsoon which aids formation of tropical cyclones over Bay of Bengal. Number 6. Frictional force between air and sea is comparatively higher in the tropical areas. Number 7. Disruption of water circulation caused by El Nano also aids formation of cyclones in the region. The conclusion of the answer is Most of these factors are either weak or absent in the Arabian Sea. Therefore, tropical cyclones largely remain confined to South China Sea, Bay of Bengal, and Gulf of Mexico. Formation of cyclones in the region. The conclusion of the answer is Most of these factors are either weak or absent in the Arabian Sea. Therefore, tropical cyclones largely remain confined to South China Sea, Bay of Bengal, and Gulf of Mexico. Question number 2. In the light of the Satyam scandal 2009, discuss the changes brought in corporate governance to ensure transparency, accountability. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The Satyam scandal of 2009 gave a jolt to Indian corporate stakeholders. It highlighted the loopholes in the corporate governance in India. In its fraudulent auditing practices, Satyam Computers, allegedly in connivance with auditors and chartered accountants, misrepresented its accounts both to its board, stock exchanges, regulators, investors, and all other stakeholders. Moving on to the main body of the answer Post Satyam scandal, many changes brought in the corporate governance to ensure transparency and accountability. Number 1. In 2002, the Naresh Chandra Committee on Corporate Audit and Governance suggested various reforms relating to the appointment of auditors, audit fee, and the certification of accounts. Number 2. After the scandal, the CII set up a task force to suggest reforms and the NASCOM established a Corporate Governance and Ethics Committee in 2003 headed by Narayana Murthy. Number 3. The Narayana Murthy Committee analyzed the role of independent directors and suggested that the listed companies had to make compulsory disclosures to its shareholders. Number 4. In 2009, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs also released a set of voluntary guidelines for corporate governance dealing with the independence of directors, the roles and responsibilities of audit committees, the boards of companies, and the whistleblower policies. Number 5. In 20I0, SEBI amended the listing agreement to include the provision dealing with the appointment of a chief financial officer, but it did not insist on the compulsory rotation of auditors. Number 6. In 2013, India adopted a new company law incorporating many provisions and reforms suggested by the various committees and organizations during the past decade. Number 7. It clearly established the responsibility and accountability of independent directors and auditors. Number 8. It provided for the compulsory rotation of auditors and audit firms. 
Number 9. It even prescribed a statutory cooling off period of five years following one term as an auditor. Number 10. Under the Companies Act, 2013 an auditor cannot perform non-audit services for the company and its holding and subsidiary companies. Number 11. The new law also insisted on companies having independent directors. At least one-third of the board of a company has to consist of independent directors. The conclusion of the answer is Besides additional disclosure norms such as the formal evaluation of the performance of the board of directors, filing returns with the registrar of companies etc. were also mandated. Question number 3. Examine the developments of airports in India through joint ventures under public-private partnership PPP, model. What are the challenges faced by the authorities in this regard? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The ambitious program of rapid modernization of airports in the country has an important component of the public-private partnership. The main body of the answer is Number 1. The privatization of Indian airports began in India way back in 1999. At present, the Indian airports that are being managed under PPP include Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Cochin airports. Number 2. In airport infrastructure projects, PPP brings efficiency in service delivery, expertise, enterprise, as well as professionalism other than harnessing the needed investments in the public sector. Number 3. By adoption of PPP model, the airport sector may provide an immediate opportunity to attract foreign direct investment. Number 4. PPPs have the potential to deliver infrastructure projects better and faster. The major challenges faced by the authorities in this regard include tariff fixation and absence of renegotiation in between the project. Number 5. Lack of proper surveys and data gathering for forecasting the traffic etc. Very long duration of infrastructure projects spanning over 20 to 30 years. Number 6. Inefficient and inequitable allocation of risk can be a major factor leading to failure of PPPs. PPP contracts focus more on fiscal benefits instead of service delivery for citizens. Number 7. Capacity building of all stakeholders including regulators, authorities, consultants, financing agencies, etc. Absence of a national policy on PPP model. The conclusion of the answer is Land acquisition and impact on environment and biodiversity high airport charges affecting the airlines The Kelkar Committee report on reforms to energize public-private partnerships, PPP, in the infrastructure sector should be implemented to boost the aviation sector in India.